Hi guys and welcome back to the Couch Crocheter, episode 44. Two finished objects and some whips, otherwise known as bags of shame. <laughs> Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of the Couch Crocheter. I'm on episode 44. I wanted to do a quick video just to show you um, two things that I talked about in the last video that I did get done, one that was already done that I forgot at home, and then I finally got the other one done, which I'm just going to jump right in and celebrate, do a little dance, because I finally got the yip yips done. They're done. They're completed. They're staring at me now with eyeballs, which make me happy. I'm shooting this video, and they are getting delivered tomorrow. I am done the yip yips. They turned out awesome. Again, I don't know why I was dragging my feet. It literally took me like five minutes to finish them. <laughs> Just five lonely, short minutes. I think it took longer to heat up the glue gun than it did to actually finish them. <laughs> but here's an inserted picture of Yip Yip Invasion at headquarters. They are marked as done, finally. Woohoo! <laughs> so guys for the last time I'm just gonna tell you where I got the pattern and what I used um, I did use Yarnspirations Barnett Blanket um, Misty Green Blue and Lavender are the three colors that I used I did use a L hook for them I used not even one skein each I still have a leftover ball out of the Misty Green one I have made um, a night mask cover or an eye cover and I still have green left over so it didn't even take one skein to do it um, they are 100% polyester it is considered a bulky number six um, each ball or each skein had 300 grams 10.5 10 ounces 220 yards or 201 meters um, they are machine washable and dryable, but I do not recommend doing that because of the eyeballs and the antennas, but that's what the yarn said. The channel that I got it from is Harriet's Crochet, and it is called Easy Yip Yip Storage Bags. Now, this was an order that was put in quite some time ago um, that I just didn't get around to doing it first because I couldn't find the right colors. Um, and then I did it in velvet and that failed because they turned out way smaller and I still have the green velvet over here with the, um, the yarn it in it. Um, the yarn it is like a little tool that you use to put scrap balls in um, and they don't roll around. It's like the ball is on a stand and it just self feeds out of the, the, the ball, which is awesome. And it's called yarn it and I found it at Hobby Lobby. Um, but the other one is just sitting over here with it in it and then I didn't like the velvet because again like I love the texture I love the look, but it was just too small um, And then I did find colors, you know so the person that requested them request them for um, Stockings for Christmas like Christmas stockings um, she wants to use those instead of Christmas stockings so I tried to wait and wait and wait and wait to see if they would come out with any more brighter colors of those, but because it's blanket yarn with Barnett, like sometimes, you know, it's a hit and miss and I didn't want to order it offline for whatever reason. I didn't order it offline where they probably had a lot more variety, um, but I didn't. So Yip Yips are done. They have invaded headquarters. I'm sending them back to the mothership to go wherever they came from. And I should have found out where they came from before I did that video because that would be cool if I can just say blah, 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 but I didn't research that. So wherever they came from, they're going back to. <laughs> yep, yep, invasion is over. Okay, so the other finished object is the blanket that I did. Oh, I don't need this. Um, the blue blanket, granny square blanket that I did, and I'll insert, um, pictures here on the back of the couch. What I did was just do two layer granny square, um, and it's just a basic granny square. 
in Mainstay, I think it's Blue Multi. Yeah, Blue Multi. Um, this is Mainstay's, um, so I do believe that this is um, Michael's um, brand of yarn. It is 100% acrylic. 285 yards, 5 ounces, 141.7 grams, or 260 meters. Um, I did use a J hook. Um, no, did I use a J hook? Did I write that down in here? Yes, a J hook. Um, and the other color that I used, which the specs are different, was teal um so in the inside is the blue multi and the teal i believe is um walmart brand or wait no maybe this is walmart no this is walmart this isn't michael's mainstay is walmart i'm sorry guys this is walmart yeah um and then the teal is the same but it was just called teal um and i don't have the specs for that one because i don't have the label anymore I think there's like a label monster that comes and like steals my labels along with my socks an occasional t-shirt um but i i swear to god i put them all in my bags of shame and then i don't know if they get taken in and out so much that i lose them i don't know but i only have one label um and i do have a skein of the other one did i put it back on the shelf yes i did um i have another one of the blue multi but i do not have another one of the teal so back to what i was saying i used a j hook so the um granny square pattern was just a pattern you know that i did and then i found fiber spiders join as you go granny so then i followed his tutorial but i don't know a couple videos back when i first introduced this blanket so craig from Fi fiber spider came up with the tutorial but i do believe i'm sorry i don't know why my nose itches um, I do believe that, actually, I, I know, because um, Craig said it in his video, that Debbie from the Canadian Crotcheter actually developed the actual, like, pattern and, like, the drawing to follow. Um, and then Greg turned around and received that pattern from Debbie and I guess got permission to make a tutorial of it to share it with the rest of the world, which I love. Love, 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 love. This was so easy. It whipped up so fast. Like, I think a football game of Coles, I was doing the squares because, you know, you don't have to, well, at least I don't have to pay much attention to when I'm doing the squares. So I was able to watch the game and do the squares and I would just cut them and put them in the bag. And then I had one day at work where I tucked in all the ends of the granny squares. And then another day, um, two days at work, I put them all together. So it took me no time. I was able to break it up into three different stages which was amazing. Um, I'm definitely doing this again, actually, and this is not up on the board, but I want to insert it here. This is for my nephew. My nephew um, is, well, he's not having patiences, which is his girlfriend, um, is having twins, um, like, next month, I think, like, December, well, not November something, December, beginning of December, I believe. She just got a date the other day, um, and darn it if I forget. I'm horrible with this stuff. I'm sorry. Um, but they're having twins. So this one, they're both boys. So this one's going to be for one of the boys. And then, um, if you look, my bag, oh, shame that this blue one was in, which this is so beat up, I'm probably going to get another one, um, that the blue one was in. I don't know if you can see, but I renamed it Red <laughs> Granny Square Blanket. Um, I'm going to make another one. Let's put this one aside. And the other one is going to be kind of sort of absolutely the same. But instead, I'm going to use this, which is called Tea Time. So this is going to be the middle. Right? And then just straight up black for the border or the join as you go part. So I think, because they're twins, I do want it to be matchy-matchy. Um, but I want it to be different. I don't want them to be exactly the same. Now, I know that I'm going to be using a Studio Classic by Nicole, but I can't pass that up. 
Um, I just think it's awesome boy colors. I think it will complement the blue one um, very well. And it will be different, but still, you know, matchy-matchy because, you know, they're both twins. Um, so this is going to be um, future work in progress that's going to be coming up that you will probably see in a couple more stages. Now, I would like to get this done. Like, this is next on the hook. I have... One other project to finish that I started that I'm going to share with you and another project that I started that I'm going to finish and share with you and then this. So once I'm done with these two, one of them just has to be assembled and put together in minor details. The other one is still is definitely, um, you know, bag of shame status. And then um, this. So you guys will see this again in the future. Very near future. Because I definitely wanted to get it done. Um before the twins get here. And I wanted to wait um, to make sure that they were both boys because, you know, sometimes ultrasounds don't reveal correct parts. And they did get an ultrasound and they were like, yes, it was boys. And then they waited and then they had a gender reveal party. So then I had to quickly finish that one. And then, um, you know, now we have a due date. So now I definitely want to get this one done before, before babies arrive which I'm so excited. And let me tell you, like when Austin sent me over the picture, because I knew that Patience was pregnant, um, he sent me over the picture. Now I've never had babies. I don't really know, sh you know what I'm looking at when I look at an ultrasound. Some of them just look like peanuts. Some of them look like blobs. Some of them actually look like, you know, little tiny humans, which is awesome. Um, so he sent me over the picture and I actually had to send back to him. I'm like, I'm sorry, is this two babies that I'm looking at? Or is it like, you know, just two different ultrasound pictures of like the same baby, just, you know, uh, sort of kind of a little bit of a different position. Like, what am I looking at here? Like, is there two babies in there? Like what's going on now? Twins do not run in our family whatsoever. Um, I've never heard of twins in our family, but her side of the family, her mom was, um, unfortunately, uh, one of two twins, but the other one did not make it from what I understand. Um, you know, I don't know details because you know, that's, I'm sure a very touchy subject and, you know, personal. Um, so there is twins that run in her family, which again, like if my brother was alive right now, he would probably have a heart attack. <laughs> um, they make me very proud. Um, anywho, that is going to be my great nephew's um, present because each of my great nieces and great nephews um, I have a homemade blanket from me and so do each of my nieces and nephews. Um, they all have a homemade blanket from me. So that's in the works. So let's get back to what we were talking about. Next, I'm going to go over, um, so I don't know if you guys remember, and I don't have the magazine with me and I'm sorry. It is at home on my chair. Um, for whatever reason, it was not in the bag. Again, like this little gremlin comes out and like steals shit from my bags. I don't know where he goes with them. I don't know what happens. But the magazine's at home. It was not in the bag. Um, so I'm going to insert a picture here of the clip from the video um, that I went back and watched and then took a screenshot of, of the magazine of what it's supposed to look like. And then I'm going to shirt insert, wow, insert another photo here <coughs> of the parts um, laid out on the back of the couch. So it is from Annie's Magazine and it is the um, Hallow Halloween decoration edition, not just the crochet edition, but they also have knitting, um, sewing, um, felting, you know, uh, other crafty stuff in there. So there was one that I showed you and you know, you saw the picture of the kitty cat unicorn. So I do have, um, it, there, you know, it's parts done. Did I just lose an ear somewhere between here and the couch? I just lost an ear somewhere. It's here cause it was in the photo. <laughs> so here's the bottom. Now this still needs to be um, tucked uh, inside out and stuffed. And then the tail gets attached like that. And then the ears go on. And then I still have to do um, eyes and then whiskers, I think it has. I think it also has like three things up here in the photo if I remember correctly. I'm not gonna add those on. I could be wrong on that. 
Um, and then I'll go over the yarn with you. The only one I really know anything about is the yellow one. The white was a scrap ball. The orange was leftover scrap ball that I've used on two separate projects now. And the yellow is um, Studio Classic by Nicole. And again, I'm sorry I'm using up AC Moore yarn, but I'm kind of at the point now where like I'm not spending any more money on yarn because everything needs to go to my house fund. So I'm just gonna use what's on my shelf from like here on out. So I don't think there's gonna be any shopping videos until my house is done. And the next one is probably going to be Smiley's Yarn again. I'm definitely making that trip um, again. So there won't be, you know, at least no anticipated yarn shopping trips. So I'm just using what's on my shelf, guys. So I'm hoping that between now and when my house is done, that this wall behind me will condense. Um, I'm really going to put in an effort of using all this up and then replenishing um, at a later date when, you know, my house is done because that is much more important. So, oh yeah, so the only thing I can tell you is that it's a, a Studio Classic by Nicole and it is just called Yellow. Um, I have this much left of it and I've done this with it. So there's a considerable amount and I will put this back on the shelf behind me. Um, to be pulled again for another project that I might need some yellow for. So my next video, this kitty cat will be all together and assembled and stuffed. Oh, there's the other ear. Found it. <laughs> I did lose it on the way over. <laughs> so then the last um, object that I have, and here's another story for you. Um, this last weekend, Cole had a baseball tournament, and one of the games was um, later in the evening. I think it started at 7, um, and it was chilly that night. Like, uh, I did not bring a blankie. I ended up borrowing Amanda's blankie, which is um, Cole's mom, uh, Amanda. Um, so I ended up borrowing her blankie, and, like, I froze... And I was very jealous of Amanda at the time, and I'm going to tell you why, because normally, you know, jealousy and me don't go in the same sentence whatsoever. But I don't know if it was two years ago. I think it was two years ago. Um, she had asked me for a hood with a scarf that had pockets. And I was like, perfect. So I did some research and I found one that I loved, and it was from Bag o Day. And it is called the Hooded Scarf with Pockets Crochet Tutorial. Um, and I will insert a picture here of me wearing it, sending that picture to her once it was done to find out if she liked it. She picked out the colors, which turned out amazing. So she ended up wearing this right here um, to the baseball game that night. And she looked so cozy. And like it looked so warm and she looked all snuggly and she said like you know it was keeping her ears warm and that one point with her hands all tucked into the pockets and she was like I you know my hands are sweating in here and then I take them out and they're cold um, so you know they kept going back and forth and I was like man I wish my ears were warm right now because they're about to fall off and I wish you know my hands were warm right now because they're about to freeze so that night, I said to myself and to Amanda and Matt both that I'm making myself another one. Well, I'm making another one, but this one's going to be for myself. So I stopped at headquarters that night here on my way home, and uh, I picked this out for, um, for the same scarf pocket um, hood thing. What is it called? Hooded scarf with... Pockets Crochet Tutorial. So I did end up using Yarn Inspiration Barnett Blanket. It is a super, super bulky number six. This one has 300 grams, 10.5 ounces, 220 yards or 201 meters. This particular color is called Lilac Leaf. I am going to end up using, I believe, if I remember correctly, two of them. Um, and I think I still had a little bit left over from it, um, but we're going to have to see. I don't know. I don't remember exactly how many I used. This is 100% polyester. I am using a J-hook. Um, the yarn is machine washable and dryable. 
I'll insert a picture here of the progress that I've made so far. And again, guys, I just started this the other day and I really hope to have it definitely done by next weekend because we have another tournament um, next weekend and I don't want to freeze. So yeah, I need to get my butt on this, but here it is, you know, the video that I just showed you or the photo, but here it is live. Um, I'm loving it. I'm loving how it's working up. You know, Crystal never goes wrong with any of her patterns. They're always so easy to follow and they're fun. Like I find myself, there's a couple of, um, pattern makers out there for YouTube that I find myself enjoying actually watching the tutorial, um, and doing it. You know, sometimes it's a little frustrating because you don't quite understand what they're saying or where they're going and you know everybody learns differently so therefore everybody teaches differently um crystal is just one of those ladies that i caught on to right away she has inspired me a lot and she has taught me a lot and this is another one of her crochet patterns that i will definitely be making again i do still have a lot of barnett blanket over there and i think after the one that i'm done and putting the kitty cat together and making um either Oliver, wait, what are the twins' names? Oliver and Coda? Oliver and Cody? Oliver and Coda. Um, so I'm still going to have to, you know, finish that. And then that will be next on the hook will be um, at least two more of these style of um, hooded scarf with pocket crochet tutorial. So guys, that is all I have. That's all I've been working on the last couple of days. And I was definitely excited to show you that blanket that I spoke of, of the last video. Um, so I do have my book back and I am definitely in need of some cleansing of my soul. Um, so this is Melody B. Tai, Journey to the Heart, Daily Meditations on the Path to Freeing Your Soul. And I do believe that we are on January 15th. Okay. You're free to follow your heart. No one has taken your freedom away. You may have relinqu relinquished it for reasons known and unknown, but you've always been free, free to choose. And you have chosen, sorry, and you have been chosen whether or not you have been conscious of your choices. For many years, you chose not to be free. Then you felt st stifled. So you groused and rebelled. This was an important part of your journey. It helped you break out of your prison, loosen the chains around you. Now you see the truth. You have always been free. Celebrate the breaking of the chains. Celebrate your freedom and share it joyfully with others. Tell yourself, tell others too, that you're free to trust and follow your own heart. So guys, that's all I have for today's episode. Thank you so much for stopping by. Please make sure you like and subscribe the video. Give it a share. I really want to get my subscribers up to 500 so I can do a giveaway. I think that would make me feel awesome inside to share with the Yarny community. And then thank you guys for sticking around and the new subscribers that have just joined. I appreciate you all. Stay safe. Be groovy. Bye, guys.